WTN Radio. Hear the difference. Now the news, I'm Ken Yu. China is committed to further opening up its huge domestic market to the world. Chinese President Xi Jinping made remarks on Friday in a message to the 5th China International Import Expo in Shanghai. Gao An has more. Creating new opportunities for the world with China's own development and contributing share to building an open global economy. This is a key message from President Xi at the opening ceremony of the 5th CIE. Today, the CIIE has become a showcase of China's new development paradigm, a platform for high standard opening up and a public good for the whole world. The fifth CIIE is the first major international expo held in China since the 20th CPC National Congress. President Xi said that China remains committed to the fundamental national policy of opening up to the outside world, pursues a mutually beneficial strategy of opening up, and adheres to the right course of economic globalization. The CIIE is the world's first import-themed national-level expo. According to the Ministry of Commerce, exhibitors at the previous four editions launched more than 1,500 new products, technologies, and services, with a total expected turnover exceeding 270 billion U.S. dollars. Indonesian President Yoko Widodo says he expects more products from Indonesia will reach the Chinese market through the China International Import Expo. He made the remarks at the opening ceremony of the CIIE via video. Since the first CIIE was held, the expo has been an important link for economic and trade cooperation between China and Indonesia. The relationship between the two countries has become a role model for mutually beneficial cooperation between regional countries. We hope the expo will play an active role and provide a platform for dialogue to promote the growth and recovery of the world economy. Meantime, leaders of foreign countries including Sri Lanka, Mauritania, Mozambique, Belarus, Guyana and Solomon Islands have congratulated the opening of the CIIE. The heads of international organizations including the World Bank, the IMF and the WTO have also addressed the event. Officials with the National Health Commission say China will stick to a dynamic zero-COVID approach. They say the general policy of dynamic zero-COVID represents an example of putting human life above all else and helps coordinate economic development and epidemic prevention. Health officials also said that China will continue to work on scientific advances and precise prevention to avoid a one-size-fits-all approach. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has held separate phone calls with Singaporean Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan and Indonesian Coordinating Minister Luhut Bingsar Panjitan, hailing China's ties with the ASEAN countries. Speaking with his Singaporean counterpart, Wang says China is ready to maintain close high-level exchanges with Singapore and make the bilateral relationship a model in China's relations with its neighbors. Wang also voiced expectation that the ASEAN countries could stand in solidarity and provide more certainty and stability for the world. In his talk with Panjitan, Wang stressed that China will firmly support Indonesia's G20 presidency, encouraging the summit to cope with global challenges, including the world economic downturn. The United Nations Security Council remains split on how to respond to missile tests by North Korea. The UK and the US called for another emergency meeting on Friday after North Korea test-fired multiple ballistic missiles this week. However, China and Russia say the US has been increasing tensions on the Korean peninsula. Jody Jacobs has more from the UN. The UN Security Council remains split on how to deal with the DPRK. In May, China and Russia vetoed a US-led push to impose more sanctions on the nation. Beijing and Moscow ever blame the US for the escalating situation on the peninsula and accuse it of not doing enough to incentivize the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to participate in denuclearization talks. The UN Secretary General has urged the DPRK to immediately return to the negotiating table. Twitter has started a major round of layoffs, alerting employees of their job status by email after barring the entrances to offices and cutting off workers' access to internal systems overnight. The move follows a week of uncertainty about the company's future under new owner Elon Musk, who tweeted on Friday that a service is experiencing a massive drop in revenue. And that's the news. I'm Tian Yu.